Hi, my name is Jessica Holder and I'm a third year Elon DPT student. The article I reviewed is by Carabay et al. It's a level two level of evidence and it's titled Effects of Functional Electrical Stimulation on Trunk Control in Children with Diplegic Cerebral Palsy. So the target population in this study was 33 children with spastic diplegia cerebral palsy, ages two through 10, and they had to have no orthopedic deformities, communication problems, or extreme spasticity. The outcome measures that they used to measure trunk control were the gross motor function measure sitting scores, and they took radiographs where they measured a kyphosis angle, a sacral angle, and a Cobb angle. Um, they used neuromuscular electrical stimulation. I have an empty unit here, continuum, and they used two channels with the electrodes placed one centimeter above and below the umbilicus line, and, then go ahead and, look. and one centimeter to each side of the lumbar midline over the paravertebral muscles. Okay. Children laid in supine during 30 minute treatments, and the parameters of the electrotherapy were intensity was 20 to 30 milliamps, um, just until a contraction was observed and the children wouldn't accommodate. Um, a pulse width of 250 microseconds, a frequency of 25 hertz, um, on off time of 10 seconds on, 12 seconds off, um, and for a total time of 30 minutes. So it didn't mention a ramp time in this, which I wish they would use because they probably did with the children, but um, it wasn't cited in their articles. So the control group what, did four weeks of conventional physical therapy and rehabilitation, and the experimental group did also four weeks of just conventional physical therapy, along with 30 minutes of FES five days a week for four weeks. So it was a lot of FES, almost every day of the week for a long period of time. And um, the outcomes that they found were statistically significant of p-value of less than 0 .001 increase in the GMFM sitting scores, a statistically significant decrease, also p-value of less than 0 .001 in the Cobb angle and the kyphosis angle, and there was no difference between gr um, groups in the sacral angle. So it showed that children were better, better able to control their trunk were better able to maintain that control um, during the outcome measures and also during the radiographs. And um, so I'll just go through the parameters on our unit because it's really easy to set up with the empty. And so we have two channels. We go to NMES for a large muscle group, and it's a custom setting. The time is 30 minutes, off time of 12 seconds. Rate is 25 hertz. Pulse width, it doesn't go to 250, so 252 microseconds. Waveform is symmetrical. Cycling is simultaneous. No lag time, no ramp time mentioned. An on time for both channels is 10 seconds. And that's it. And so we would just turn up the stimulation until we can observe a contraction and the child can take it and then we'd let it run for 30 minutes and turn it up between 20 to 30 milliamps um, so that the child doesn't accommodate. My personal opinion on this article is I would most likely not use it in the clinic because it is 30 minutes, five days a week. I would rather use my time on something active, but I would consider it as a home intervention. If they have very involved caregivers um, that can work with the parameters of the unit and are very involved and want to, it's definitely some great outcomes, but it's a little too much time out of our clinic time um, to be efficacious. So that is all. Thank you for listening.